in the last lecture we attached the access token with the get request that's why while making the http get request we are able to fetch all the tasks from the database if the user is logged in so currently if i log into this angular application let's say using john smith account in that case we have been redirected to dashboard component and it has fetched all the tasks from the database and it has been displayed here also when i click on this fetch task button it is going to fetch all the tasks and it is going to display it here but if i try to delete a record so if i click on this delete button you see we are not able to delete the, that task from the database also if i try to get information about this task by clicking on this button this details button we are not getting those details and if i try to create a new task by clicking on this create task button and adding some description about that task and now when i click on this create task button we are still going to get the error that we do not have permission to perform this action that's because currently we are passing this access token only with the get request we are not passing this access token to any other request like the delete request in order to delete a task or to this post request in order to create a task or to the put request so to this put request while editing the task and also we are not passing that access token to this get request in order to get the task details we are only sending it when we are fetching all the tasks from the database so we are only attaching this access token this query string to the request only when we are trying to fetch all the tasks from the database so what we can do is we can write this same logic for each of these requests okay so we need to send that access token with each of these requests which we are making from within this task service class in order to read or write data in the firebase database now instead of doing it individually for each of these requests what we are going to do is we are going to make use of interceptors as we have learned in the http section using interceptors we can write some logic which will be executed for all requests so let's see how we can use interceptors in order to set this access token on each of the outgoing requests for that in the last section we created this auth interceptor so let's go to this file and we are going to modify this file a little bit first of all i am going to remove this console.log statement from here inside this class we are going to inject an instance of auth service so here let's say auth service so we are creating a property which is going to be of type auth service and to inject an instance we are going to use this inject method and there we will specify the type for which we want an object an instance to be injected okay and in order to use this inject method we also need to input it from angular slash go all right once we have an instance of this auth service what we will do is we will go ahead and we will subscribe to this user observable to this behavior subject and for now let's close this header component.ts file we don't need it and let's go back to this auth interceptor service class all right now the next thing which we are going to do is we are going to subscribe to this user observable so what i will do is i will remove all these logic from here and the first thing which we are going to do is we are going to access the user observable and we are going to subscribe to it and as we have learned in the http section that from this interceptor function from this interceptor method we need to call the handle function of next so for example we need to call next dot handle and from here we need to return the modified request currently we have not modified the request in any way so for now let's simply return the original request but we are going to modify this request in some way so basically we are going to modify the request and there we are going to add a query string and then we are going to return that modified request from here now again when we are subscribing to this user observable we know that since it is a behavior subject it is going to give us the previously emitted value 
right so what i'm going to do is just like what we did in the last lecture here i'm going to use pipe and then i'm going to use take operator and in order to use this take operator we need to import it from rxjs slash operators and here i'll specify one so what this take operator will do is it will get the latest value which was emitted earlier and then it is also going to unsubscribe from this observable as soon as we have received that value then this take operator it is going to return us an observable and that observable it is going to give us the user data the user data which has been emitted by this user observable so we are going to take that and for that i am going to use x host map okay we are going to take that data and we know that here we are going to receive the result of the previous observable and the result of the previous observable is going to be the user object because this take operator it is going to return us the last emitted user so that we are going to receive here and once we have the user what we are going to do is we are going to create a variable let's simply call it as modified request and now we are going to modify the original request for that first of all we are going to create a clone of the original request because the request object itself is immutable we cannot modify it so first we need to create a clone of that and while creating the clone we can specify what we want to change there so here what we want is on this request object we also want to add a query parameter for that we can specify this params property and on that we want to set a new query parameter for that we are going to use new http params and to use this http params we also need to import it from angular slash common slash http we are going to call its constructor and on that we are going to call the set method and what do we want to set here we want to set the auth query string and its value should be so we want to extract the token value from this user object so here we will simply say user dot token and we want to assign it to this auth query string and here it should be comma all right let me move this in a separate line to make it more readable all right and then finally we want to return that modified request so again for that we can call next dot handle and from there we are going to return this modified request and actually this should go outside of this callback function i mean outside of this set method and let me remove this return statement from here and finally what we want is so basically here when this code will be executed it is going to return us an observable okay actually here it is going to return us a subscription so i'm going to remove this subscribe from here and now it is going to return us an observable and that observable we want to return from this interceptor so now whenever a request will be made at that time first this auth query parameter will be set on each of the request and then an observable will be returned and that observable will be received by each of these requests so here in the get all tasks now we don't need to use this take operator because we are already doing it in the interceptor so interceptor will take care of this and we also don't need to use this exhaust map because that will also be taken care by the interceptor so let me remove it and now we are simply using map and this catch error with this let's save the changes let's go to our application and let's see if we have any error all right i don't see any error let's reload this application let's go to login let's log in here using one credential maybe i'll use john smith credential i'll specify the password for john smith let's log in and here it says an unknown error has occurred now why is that the reason is the interceptor logic which we have written in this auth interceptor it will be executed for each outgoing request including sign up and login request and when that happens what we are trying to do is we subscribe to the user service so here we are subscribing to this user not service this user observable 
and when we send the login request by that time the user object is going to be null right so this observable it is going to return us a user object once we log in or sign up so currently we are trying to log in so before sending the login request we are trying to access this token on this user object now since we have not logged in yet this user will be null because if you remember the initial value of this behavior subject we have set it to null so that user object will be null at that time after login when we receive the response then only we are emitting an actual user object before that it is going to be null and on that null we are trying to access this token property and this is where that error is happening okay so what we are going to do is before we run this logic before that we are going to check if the user exists so here let's add a check and there let's say if the user does not exist that means if this user object is null if it does not have an actual user object in that case we simply want to return so here i'll write that return statement we simply want to return and we want to return the original request so here we are going to call next dot handle and from here we want to return the original request at that time we are not going to modify this request we simply want to return the original request from this interceptor okay with this let's save the changes let's go back and now let's try to log in so again i'll use john smith credential and let's click on this login button and now we are properly logged in but for some reason we don't have the task details here so everything is empty and this might be because here in the task service ah uh, you see here we are returning the observable returned by this user but here it should be this dot http dot get okay and to this get method we need to specify the url so for the url let's go back to our database and from here let's copy this url let's paste it here and after that let's specify task.json because task is our collection name from where we want to get all the task and it should be tasks.json okay with this let's save the changes let's go back to our application let's re-log in using john smith account and let's click on this login button so we are logged in now we are getting all the tasks in the ui so here while removing that code i also removed that get request which we were making because of that we had that error anyway now it is working and now let's try to perform other tasks so for example let's try to create a new task let's call it maybe sample task let's add a description let's assign it to mary jane let's select a date let's say it is of medium severity and it has started and let's click on this create task button so we are not getting any error let's click on this fetch task button again and it should fetch all the tasks so now we should have six tasks as you can see if i try to delete a task for example if i try to delete the sample task i'll click on this delete button it should send a delete request and it should delete that task so you see we are not getting any error if i click on this fetch task again now we should have only five tasks and if i try to get the details of a task i can click on this button and it should show us the details of that task the description of the task the name of the task whom it has been assigned to and other details so now all these requests are working as expected because now with each request which we are sending with that we are attaching the access token and we are attaching that access token using query string and we are doing it in this auth interceptor so this auth interceptor it will run for each request which we are going to send from this application and it is going to add this auth query string and to that this user token will be assigned and it is going to do it for each request so for each request we will have this auth query parameter 
assigned with the value of access token. Only for those requests where this user is null, only for those requests, this logic will not get executed. Only for those requests, we are returning the original request. There, we are not adding any auth query parameter. All right. So this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.